Shub Negorath, Black Goat of the Woods, an old mother with a thousand young. Cool titles, but can she like punch Goku or whatever? Like, how powerful is Shub Negorath? Well, to properly answer that question, one would need to read all the stories Lovecraft wrote, and I'll have you know that I play Yu-Gi-Oh, so I don't read, but if I did have the capacity, here's how I would answer that question. So, Shub Negorath is one of the other gods. Now, I previously made a video talking about the powers of Cthulhu, and in that video I explained some things that are important for the cosmology Lovecraft invented. I don't want to punish recurring viewers, so I won't explain the same things again, which means I will go through this entire video assuming you have watched my video on Cthulhu. If you haven't, link in the description. So, as I was saying, Shub Negorath is one of the other gods, which means she lives in the void, and that by default makes her really powerful. Basically, everything I said about Cthulhu would apply to Shub Negorath as well. However, the other gods are not all equal. Some are more primal, more fundamental than others. Lovecraft once made a family tree for the other gods. In it, we can see that Cthulhu descends from a deity called Nu and Nug in turn comes from Dioxototh and Shub Negorath. And in a story called The Dunwich Horror, it is stated that Cthulhu has problems perceiving higher rank deities. We are talking about Cthulhu here, and he can barely perceive them. That's how much beyond Cthulhu beings like Shub Negorath are. Remember the staircase from my Cthulhu video? Let's bring it back. Here's Cthulhu. Now let's make another step, and that's where Shub Negorath would be. So as you can see, she would be insanely powerful. But here's the thing, this staircase I made does not properly represent the gap between Cthulhu and Shub Negorath, because this staircase makes it seem like Shub Negorath is only slightly above Cthulhu. The reality is that beings like Shub Negorath are so beyond the rest of creation that compared to them, everything else is not real, it's fake an illusion. And a being like Shub Negorath can manipulate the whole of creation however she wants. And remember, the cosmology of Lovecraft is insanely massive, and from Shub Negorath's perspective, even something as big as this massive cosmology is essentially fictional. So while in this graph I represent Shub Negorath as just being slightly above Cthulhu, the reality is that Shub Negorath would be so beyond Cthulhu that Cthulhu might as well not exist. And that, my friend, is how powerful Shub Negorath is. Well, that was easy, right? So why is there so much video left? Well, here's the thing, Shub Negorath is part of the big five from the Lovecraftian mythos. That's five names that everyone watching this video has heard of at least once. But unlike the other four, Shub Negorath actually never appears in any of the stories, and in fact, she technically doesn't even have a single line of dialogue. So because there's not much to work with, if you want to talk about her powers, what I told you is basically about as good as it gets. But I didn't want to make a video that was like two minutes long, so since you are already here, I decided to make your time worth it and give you some extra information about Shub Negorath. The rest of this video does not have to do with her powers, but it'll be interesting. At least I think so anyways. Okay, so let's start with her character motivation. What does she want? What's her goal? Well, actually, we have no idea. See, most of the other gods are very straightforward. And when I say most of them, I don't just mean the big five. The void is full of these creatures. Five of them are the most well-known, but there's a bunch more. And most of them are very simple to understand. Most of the other gods are mindless. They are incapable of thinking, and they are also hungry. Like, all the time. So they just want to eat. Outside the void there are things they can eat. They want to eat them. It is as simple as that. But Shub Negorath has shown that she has the capacity for thinking. See, back when Mu was at the surface, there was a guy named Tiog. He was the high priest of Shub Negorath, and his goal was to kill a monster called Gatano Toa. However, he couldn't just walk to the thing and stab it because anyone who looks at Gatano Toa gets petrified. So in a dream, Shub Negorath herself grants Tiog a spell that would protect him from the petrification powers of Gatano Toa. This shows that Shub Negorath is capable of thinking. She is not not mindless. So the question is, if Shub Negorath can think and she is super powerful, why can't she achieve her goal, whatever it may be? That's assuming, of course, that she has any goal in the first place, and we can speculate about what her end goal could be, and I certainly have my head canon, but Lovecraft himself does not provide an answer. So at least canonically, we don't know what she wants. We don't know mystery box. The only thing we know for certain about Shub Negorath's personality is that, according to Tiog, for some reason, she really disliked Gatano Toa. However, what Tiog says should be taken with a a mountain of salt, because the actual reason why Tiog wanted to kill Gatano Toa was because he believed that if he did, he would become so famous that people might even worship him as a god. Nevertheless, Shub Negorath did give Tiog the power he needed, which shows that A, at the very least, Shub Negorath was okay with her high priest trying to kill Gatano Toa, and B, she is capable of thinking. We also know that she's been worshipped on Earth since like the dawn of mankind, which yeah, of course she has. Mankind made a deal with the other gods basically right after they were created, but aside from these facts, she 
she's an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Okay, but what about her appearance then? What does she look like? Well, presumably like a goat. I mean, it is in her title. But in all of his stories, Lovecraft actually never describes her. What he does describe are her offspring. You probably know them by the name Dark Young, although you'll be surprised to learn that Lovecraft actually did not came up with that name. You won't find the term Dark Young in any of the stories Lovecraft wrote, because that term was invented by someone else well after Lovecraft died. But anyways, in his stories, Lovecraft only describes the offspring of Shubnegorath once, and all he says is that they are black in color, they kinda look like goats, and they have fur. Presumably, Shubnegorath looks like her offspring, so she's also some kind of hairy goat thing. Speaking of her offspring, Shubnegorath is known as the goat with a thousand young, but we don't know if this number is literal. Does she only have a thousand goat children? Or is the number figurative, and by a thousand, Lovecraft just meant a bunch? We don't know. Alright, now, let's finish this by talking about the famous expression, Ia Shubnegorath. The word Ia is from a language called Rileyan. Rileyan is the language of the other gods. As for what the word Ia means, Lovecraft never specifically explains it in his stories. It must mean something like hail or praise. The word Ia is not exclusive to Shubnegorath. We've seen the word used when talking about the Mayan gods, so presumably, as a way to show your respects towards something or someone, you use the word Ia followed by the name. Alright, that's pretty much all I have to say about Shubnegorath. Now let's go back to the original premise of this video and answer the question again. So, how powerful is Shubnegorath? She's more powerful than Cthulhu and more powerful than most things in her own verse. Even if there are other beings in the void who are as powerful as her, the fact that Shubnegorath can think would give her an advantage, because she can actually use her powers instead of being a dumb thing that only cares about feeding. So, in summation, Shubnegorath is big strong. However, let me be clear on something. I am not claiming she is the strongest, nor am I claiming she solos everyone in her verse. There are still beings in her verse who are more powerful than her. One of them would be Nyarlathotep, but that, as they say, is a story for another time. Alright, now I'm done. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.